アルテミラ閣下についてですか話すのは構いませんが3時間ほどお時間をいただけますか Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I will talk about the way to build Varna, who is Ultimuller's lover and who poisons her lover for the sake of her little sister Anna. Because, you know, demons can totally be trusted. However, in Langrisser, Varna is actually a very, very great PvP character, and she also has incredible utility for Ancient's Call. In Ancient's Call, for the Fenrir fight, she is really the top tier character, along with Bozel. Everyone uses Bozel for taking these top 20 teams on two different servers from the Chinese uh, servers. On server 1, 19 of the top 20 players used Varna in their fight against Fenrir. And then on server 23, all 20 players used Varna. So she is incredibly, incredibly powerful for the Fenrir fight because of her Thousand Arrows skill. It allows her to basically, uh, the combination of aim and Thousand Arrows allows her to basically trigger the uh, special buffs on, in the Fenrir fight and then launch an attack on Fenrir himself, as this video will show. Other than the Fenrir fight, she also does have some utility in fighting Hugen and Munin. As you can see here, six of the players on server 1 use their Varna, and then on server 23, two of the top 20 used Varna there. What you saw in that clip just now was Varna using mass attack in the Hugin and Munin fight. And the reason to bring Varna for mass attack is because of the effects, the secondary effects of mass attack rather than its primary effect. And that is mass attack grants immunity to attack and int reduction and affects that silence active skills. Hugin and Munin will debuff your characters with a huge uh, attack and int reduction. With Varna having mass attack, you can totally prevent that reduction so your characters will do full damage. So that's two different Ancient's Call battles where Varna is very useful. Granted, in both battles she is not considered a primary damage dealer, so uh, you know, so she is usable even without being fully upgraded. But if you have her fully upgraded, it's not a bad thing. Meaning, you know, you've gotten double class mastery put and gave her her own equipment set. And the reason why it's not a bad thing as well is because in addition to Ancient's Call, she is quite useful for PvP, right? Specifically for Thousand Arrows. Thousand Arrows doing 0.3 times AoE damage to all enemies in range which has a span of three blocks, will dispel one buff from the enemies. And after attacking, you gain a chance to move another three blocks. So with Thousand Arrows, you can endlessly toss out these AOE attacks once every two turns. Because while it has a cooldown of two turns, which theoretically means three turns between Thousand Arrows, she also has the aim skill. So what you frequently do is Thousand Arrows, then Mass Attack, then use Aim and toss out the second Thousand Arrows. And this will allow her to constantly throw out these AoEs. Oh, alternate, in addition to that though, the Aim skill effectively grants her 7 mobility. And 7 mobility can be clutch for attacking a vulnerable enemy target, such as in this video. I'm 
じる心です今こそ進軍の時なあ I should mention my Varna barely killed that Zerida with Bloodthirster. And in large part, that was because my Varna is not fully complete.、Um, for example, she is missing attack because she doesn't have her Ranger class, which is costing her 25 base attack value. Other than not having the Ranger class, the other issue with my Varna is that her bonds aren't fully upgraded either. So. In terms of bonds, you can see her heart bond is not complete, meaning she is missing 5% additional stats. Nonetheless, within those limitations, she was still able to kill off that Zerida, although it did require the Devil's Axe doing fixed damage to finish off. So clearly, Varna has multiple use in both PvP and PvE, which makes her definitely worth building up and using. So, with all that said, let's talk about her、uh, in detail. And the very first thing is the characters that are required for her bonds. To use her, you need Anna for her fourth bond, and then Ultimuller for her fifth bond. So, in other words, if you plan to use her, there is no choice but to have Ultimuller as one of your characters, because otherwise, she is going to be missing. 13% attack, which means she would do far less damage in general. But with Alte Muller, to unlock her bond, her attack bond, she is a solid addition to your lineup. Okay, so let's begin by talking about Varna's talent. And Varna's talent is actually quite simple. There is only one effect to it. And the effect is that after taking action, you grant a buff to friendly units within two blocks. AoE, damage, sorry, AoE skill damage increases by a certain percentage. It lasts one turn. The skill damage increase is 10% at two stars, 12% at three stars. 14% at 4 stars, 17% at 5 stars, and 20% at 6 stars. So clearly, you're going to want her at 6 stars ideally for the maximum AoE skill damage increase for your other party members. Given that in Season 1, anyways, PvP is very much about AoE damage, Varna's talent really helps increase the damage that your other AoE attackers will do, like s h a f a n i e l or Lena, or just anyone that you use for AoE. Even l e o n h a r d for his first AoE attack, will benefit from this effect. So, her talent, very useful, especially comboed with Aim and Thousand Arrows, because both of these skills will trigger this talent. Next. Let's talk about her best class. And Varna's best class is very, very obvious. It's the Flyer class. Because Ranger class has only 3 mobility with 2 range, whereas Dragon Master has 5 mobility and 1 range. With 5 mobility plus aim, you have 7 effective mobility, allowing you to move around like crazy to toss out thousand arrows and retreat. Skill combos for Varna is also very, very simple. It's exactly as you see shown right here. You want Thousand Arrows, you definitely want Aim, and her last skill is generally Mass Attack for the stat buff of Immunity to Attack and Int Reduction and Effects that Silence Active Skills. And of course, the Attack and Int Increase of 20%. You generally want to bring Mass Attack on her regardless because she keeps activating Aim. So even if she has a faction buff from someone else, Such as, let's say, Bernhard or Leon or Lance or Bozel, the fact that she keeps activating aim will frequently cause her to make the faction buff expire. Thus, mass attack is almost always a skill to bring on Varna. You may choose to bring, let's say, Wind Whisper for a second AoE attack or Wind Pressure to do additional damage, but generally speaking, I say neither of these are really recommended.、Uh, Because you generally will attack 
with Thousand Arrows and Retreat, right? That means retreating means Wind Pressure will not do any damage. And then Wind Whisper requires you to AoE right next to the enemy, and then you have no chance of retreating. So, gen I mean, Wind Whisper does have the occasional use because with Wind Whisper, she can actually endlessly AoE, right? She can aim thousand, she can thousand arrows, then aim. Uh, sorry, she can, yeah, thousand arrows, then Wind Whisper, that, and if she survives after that, then she can use aim and thousand arrows once more. So it does have the occasional use, but expecting your Varna to survive an enemy attack can be tough. Yeah. So that's why Jet more commonly it's she, she rotates between using mass attack and dozen arrows rather than constantly throwing out dozen arrows and wind whisper. Alright, so with all this said, let's now talk about her soldiers. And in terms of so hero boost, because she is an SR character rather than SSR, her soldier boost is less than the SSRs, meaning it is only 25% rather than 30% to start. And her beginning soldier boost is actually 5% to hit points, 10% to attack, and then 10% to defense, which is actually, it looks like a really good soldier boost in truth. Unfortunately though, her third bond increases defense and magic defense. So her final soldier boost ends up the following as you see here. 15% to hit points, 20% to attack, 35% to defense, and 25% to magic defense. I'm 2% off on defense and magic defense because I have not fully upgraded it. So the end result is it's not all that attack oriented, right? At least the soldiers don't get a 40% attack boost. So, however, because she is primarily used for 1000 arrows and the occasional mop up of a damaged enemy hero, having a non optimal attack soldier boost is okay. At the very least, it's not a huge problem for what you use her for. So, with that said, Let's talk about her training ground soldiers, which she gets three of them from. The first one is Gargoyle, a flyer soldier, which is pretty useful. The second one is Sky Archers, a three mobility ranged attacker that makes terrain have no effect on mobility and grants the character the ability to fly over uh, sky terrain. And then the last soldier she gets from the training ground is the Dark Guards. From her classes, she gets access to Griffin Knights, Vampire Bats, as well as Dark Elf Snipers and Demon Hunters. In terms of her best soldiers, since you generally use her as a Flyer class character, her best soldier really is any flying soldier. Any of them, of these three. I personally prefer Griffin Knights because it offers the most attack and defense increase when fully leveled. However, you can very easily use Vampire Bats which offer self-healing, you can use the Gargoyles which offer an attack increase when soldier hit points is above 50% as compared to Griffin Knights that require 80%. Um, it's kind of up to you which one you use. I mean, at the end of the day, my opinion is Whichever flying soldier you have leveled up of those three at level 10, whether it's Gargoyles, or Vampire Bats, or Griffin Knights, is the one you use. For me, it's Griffin Knights because it's at level 8, whereas the other two are currently at level 5. So, with her soldier covered, let's now move on to talking about her gear. And let me preface this by saying my Varna does not have optimal gear. It's because, well, I never got the optimal gear for her. But summed up, Varna is about maximizing her attack value so that her thousand arrows can do more damage and so that she can occasionally melee attack to mop up weakened enemy characters. So in terms of weapon, her best weapon would really be Ragnarok, right? Ragnarok offers the highest attack value out of any weapon, right? And it gives 
10% attack increase and does a fixed damage strike to the enemy before battle. Right. So Ragnarok is the best weapon. If you don't have a Ragnarok, I mean, Devil Axe can be useful, especially since the fixed damage strike can help you kill off an enemy. Or if you don't want to use the Devil Axe, you can also always use a Peacemaker, which does give a 10% attack increase as opposed to Devil Axe's 5% attack increase. So all three of these axes are viable. Yep. The thing is, the axes offer the most attack increase, hence why you would use axes. As opposed to lances, because lances give significantly less attack. 85 compared to 118. For her armor, realistically speaking, Varna is almost always guarded by your tank due to thousand arrows allowing her to retreat. Plus, her armor is generally, in my opinion, not a top priority. However, if you have an armor put for her, the best one would really be last rights. As all, pretty much for any flyer, right? You want the last rights because of the 40% damage reduction when the unit is at 100 hit points. If you don't have a last rights, you know, any kind of armor works for her that she can equip, whether it's gargoyle jacket, as you see on mine right now, or. Uh, Toilet armor for some more defense and magic defense increase. You could theoretically even give her the Monkey King's vest so that she does more damage in a counter attack when attacked, but that one is really less optimal because she generally has no ability to one shot enemies, anyways. So I generally say Gargoyle Jacket or uh, Toilet armor for the secondary options. In terms of her helmet now. Helmet-wise, because she has aim and dozen arrows allowing her to act again, her best helmet in truth is King's Crown. Because King's Crown can grant the adjacent friendly unit 20% extra damage for one turn. So she can theoretically move up next to an ally, activate aim, and provide that ally with the King's Crown effect. Then she can move some more, toss up a thousand arrows to dispel buffs. And then after the Thousand Arrows, she can move back three tiles, hopefully next to another ally, and King's Crown them as well. However, you may not have that many King's Crowns, right? As, it, as in my case, I only have one. So, other than King's Crown, other items that you can give her is, for example, what I have right now, German Gandir's Eye, because you have a chance to decrease the enemy's damage by 15% within two blocks. Right? In Once combat is engaged, you know, generally speaking, if it's not a battle where you're trading characters, Varna and your tank and your whole party in general will be very close to the enemy. Thus, you do have the chance to apply Drum and Gender's Eye on multiple enemies, with the aim and thousand arrows, as long as she's guarded by a tank, of course. So, Drum and Gender's Eye? can work as a secondary option. Nowhere near as good as King's Crown, but it can work. So other than those two, I my personal opinion is most of the other choices, they don't really offer any kind of buff or debuff, so I don't really recommend all, all the rest. You know, theoretically, you might consider Performer Mask to decrease, for the chance to decrease attacking int of the enemy by 20%, but then you're going down to an SR item as opposed to using SSRs, which means a hit point and magic defense stat debuff, which I can't really recommend personally. All right, so with helmets covered, the last item to talk about is the accessory. And for her, you really, the primary purpose of the accessory is the attack increase with 8% attack and attack stat. So really, any attack accessory works. Ideally, it would be an attack accessory that also gives hit points. So that would be the preferred option, right? Uh, and you ideally want one where this effect is not... Is, I don't like Lone Star Amulet because once again, it only triggers during combat, so you have to melee attack for it. So you want one that's general purpose. And the best... And the one that does that generally speaking, is the Slayer's Emblem. Right? Hit points, attack, and 8% guaranteed attack increase, and it also offers additional damage to flyers too, which is a nice bonus to have. 
Other than Stairs Emblem, Overlord's Badge can work quite well. It does give less attack increase because it's 5% rather than 8%, but it does increase all stats by 5%, and it does grant immunity to a lot of debuffs, which can definitely help your Varna. Right, specifically the attack and int reduction debuff. So, Overlord's Badge, Slayer's Emblem, Overlord's Badge, those two tend to be the top tier ones. Other than those two, you know, you can use the ones that give defense rather than hit points, like Judge's Talisman or Wing Shin Guards. Um, the only one I truly don't recommend is the Lone Star Amulet because, once again, it only provides the buff during combat and thus. Since Varna uses 1000 arrows, she generally doesn't get this buff effect at all. Alright, so with the accessory covered, let's talk about the final thing, which is her enchant. For her enchant, there's really two options, and I'm currently not running either option, I should say, because she, my Varna currently has two rough seas and two full moons, which is kind of awkward. It's kind of a broken set. And in large part, that's because I enchanted these two items for rough sea, and these two I enchanted afterwards with full moon. Yeah. Nonetheless, this actually works out okay because at least she is getting a 10% attack increase from this split set, which helps to increase her damage. However, the best enchant for her is either of these options. The first one is a full moon enchant, a full set, because the four piece effect is all offensive and defensive stats increased by 10%, meaning a full full moon set actually provides 15% attack increase, as well as 10% to all the other stats. So that makes full moon better than you know my current split set if effect. Other than full moon though, surprisingly viable for her is actually the magic enchant. Because magic, first, it does provide the 5% attack and int increase, and second, it also provides a skill damage increase of 10%, and if it's an AoE, it gets an extra 5%. Meaning her thousand arrows ends up doing 15% additional damage. I generally say go for full moon rather than magic, because full moon is more flexible, right? When you melee attack, the full moon benefit will come into play. Whereas if you melee attack with magic, you're not using any attack skill with her. Because in fact, she doesn't have any attack skills except for snare, which is a two range attack skill, which means her soldiers don't participate. Thus, realistically, you would just prefer full moon over magic. So, with all that said, I think this pretty much concludes my video on Varna. Um, she is a great character to build because she is great for PvP, at least in Apex Season 1. Uh, and she has use for Ancient's Call. So any resources you commit into her is not a bad thing. The drawbacks of using her? Well, there are definitely a few. The first and most important is that she is an SR character, ultimately. So because she's an SR character and she's not a character you're going to grind shards of, it's going to be luck based what star level you have her at when the season one of Apex Arena arrives, right? You can see in the case of my Varna, she is only five stars out of six stars. She's at 135 shards out of 150, but I've actually failed to get any shards of Varna for like two months now. I think two or three months. So even though I only need one last copy of Varna to get her to the full six stars, where she would then be able to do good damage and so on, my Varna still hasn't hit six stars. So it's going to be, for me, it's going to be luck based whether I have her at six stars for Apex Arena in the playoffs of season one even, because there's only nine days left. So I'm going to be doing some draw, I'm going to be doing some drawing before season one's uh, playoffs occurs. But you can see, for season one itself, my Varna was never at six stars. Although she may be at six stars for the playoffs. All right, so that's everything I wanted to say. 
I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out. <laughs>